afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Dovines, for the uh, introduction. And uh, for what I can see, I'm, I am in the company of uh, my friends, peers, and colleagues, and so many that I've been privileged to meet at some point in time, and others I trust that I will uh, be graced with an opportunity to encounter um, for the first time face to face. I'm excited about um, this project, this initiative, uh, the work that will be done by way of the support of our Thriving Congregation grant and this awesome team um, that has already introduced themselves to you. And of course, uh, you know Dr. Jansen, along with the rest of you all online, I would imagine that Dr. John W. Kenny um, is a hard act to follow. I feel as if, um, you know, I'm, you know, that um, that third string uh, quarterback that you just put in, you know, uh, to burn off the last few seconds now of, of the time clock as we enter uh, uh, the final uh, moment of the game. Just one second. So, well, with that being said, I had to put you on pause there for a moment because I'm learning um, as we all are from time to time to make all those necessary and subtle shifts um, based upon the experiences of life, the happenings of life, daily existence that will cause us to negotiate new ways um, to present ourselves and do the work that God has called us um, to do. Um, so when we talk about learning, as um, we will do so for the next few moments and, and how we gain and glean through the experiences that we call challenges, um, I'm serving as a witness and a, an exhibit right now uh, as I am in a public uh, space. Um, my attention is directed toward you, but my, I'm in a public space because um, I'm trying to attend to a family affair to show the love of my beloved sister uh, who has extended so much love unto me and the rest of the family as we celebrate her 55th year of existence. So um, she wanted to um, she wanted to do it fairly five star, I guess, in the form of a luncheon at a nice little resort area, socially distanced, but um, some folk every now and again walk through. But that's a lesson because we um, uh, we are made to adjust, modify, uh, two-step throughout ministry. Um, but the hope is that the mission and the aim is the same and we're committed to its fulfillment. Uh, Dr. Jansen, I believe you're sharing just an image uh, that will help us when we consider how we are, have, our trust been made aware of the uh, the hope that we have by way of Dr. Dobines and Rodriguez of of um, and Lucas of this um, uh, intention of, of, of serving um, cohort serving ministry serving churches in various uh, uh, contexts that uh, face a myriad of um, uh, social cultural and political and uh, and you name it maladies that will demand of us a response and the response that we are to render as communities of faith and those of us in particular who serve in any form of leadership, or lazy leadership, ecclesial leadership, uh, is to do so, uh, yes, with a sense of urgency. I am reminded of uh, the late um, uh, Dr. Miles Jones, who taught us homiletics at, at, at the Proctor School of Theology who would oftentimes say that, um, that Christianity is unique from all other world religions because we are only one generation away from being extinct. Remember that though, Bynes, because for, for the Christian faith is not just about doctrine, it is about doing the faith. And just as the gospel reminds us as well of the, with the immediately and the steadfastly or suddenly uh, type of refrain that we hear and uh, Mark's account in particular. Uh, we are reminded again that the time is now to respond to these challenges that we face. And the hope is that we are learning from it. And we are also imparting knowledge onto those 
whom we have been entrusted to share with or lead. And as a result, the next challenge will be better equipped or to deal with it, address it, tackle it, again, maneuver or negotiate our way through it without um, as much apprehension or anxiety. Um, so the question is, uh, how is it that our congregations learn in light of um, the times and in light of our innate pedagogy, you know, how is it that we uh, learn pedagogically and, 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 and how we acquire knowledge, skill, and know-with-all um, uh, through our experiences, uh, study, uh, being taught, or just simply being exposed at times? So much I can say that I learn just by observing. Um, observing mama and my dear and grandma and grandpa and those whom I did not even know, but how they were able to balance burdens while still being able to lend a hand in the spirit of Christ to create a more beloved community uh, or to carry out even the functions or the full operations of the local congregation that was for, that has forever evolved. So this pandemic is uh, new one to us on one hand, but not the challenge. And therefore, the methodology that we use to learn is fairly similar or the same or constant. We just need to be reminded. So you have before you such imagery that captures how challenges occur. And in this uh, secular type of experience or uh, constant evolution of, um, of happenings, um, occurrences that may very well impede uh, or, or compromise our progress or our health. Uh, it demands of us to pause. It demands of us to discern. It demands of us to make some type of critical assessment of where we are and what's happening and what is going on. Because one thing that we can do, and I can admittedly acknowledge, as I would imagine others who have perhaps been privileged to serve as senior pastors, that there have been times when I was ready to react to what I thought was, you know, the, 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 the malady or the issue. Ready to not only diagnose, but prognose and prescribe a remedy without fully engaging truly, even with this sense of urgency um, and some reflection, you know what I mean? Some analysis or assessment deeply um, to, to, to better determine what's the true cause that we consider to be a challenge that's bringing about this, whether light affliction or major uh, impediment to the progress and the health of the, uh, of the body of Christ. I will acknowledge that I'm also a nurse Aaron knows that, but I haven't practiced in what, 15 years, 10 years, 10 years practice for 15 years. And a lot of that which uh, is a part of uh, healthcare in general and anyone who's, uh, who chooses to serve in such a capacity whereby uh, you're seeking to be used by God to be such hands of care, right? Uh, we, we are always assessing always looking at the signs and the symptoms and choose and listen as a physician does to rule out before fully diagnosing. And I was narrowing down what it could be based upon what we now know it probably will, it is not. Discernment. So, 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 so let's say there's a, a matter of relationality or it, it, the issue at hand shows itself as a relational dynamic. And here's the thing, and I know early on when we did our focus groups with many of the communities that are some are represented today, a, 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 a reoccurring theme or thought or concern was that of um, uh, the uh, tension between generations, right? And the need for us um, to, um, um, to keep the folk you know, over 60 and win the folk over under 40. Um, but oftentimes when there's such um, um, uh, schisms or chasms in the church that are genera generationally 
identified as the cause. We have to consider how deeply it, relational it is on one hand, but discernment might yield also that it might speak more so to one feeling as if he or she of that particular population is not valued in the sense of the gifts that they are offering that might be unique or different from the gifts of the other generation. So discernment. So whatever that challenge is, we wanna spend some time really trying to narrow it down in this learning process. And, and, and in that, you know, it might lead to a state or a place of disappointment because it seems uh, to be overbearing or insurmountable. It might very well be a challenge that internally one might feel as if he or she is not fit to uh, handle or address. And that's why we have partners and that's why we have this cohort and this awesome team that's gonna help us all. Uh, but it also leads to even the disappointment or the direct discernment to the discovery of what is really, really happening, what's really going on, you know, that, that, um, uh, that it, it, you know, to use the enterprise of the human body and anatomy, that it, it could be as deeply um, um, uh, driven to that of being neurological or cardiovascular, but it's showing itself uh, in that of a musculoskeletal type of way. You know what I mean? Um, so, so uh, I, I've, you know, not to sound insensitive, um, um, but um, all of us, for instance, um, may have very well experienced at least a headache. You know what I mean? Um, and, and, and that headache could be caused by, yes, by stress. It could be caused by a high intake of, of sodium. Um, it could be caused, obviously, by uh, eventually discovering uh, hypertension, the so-called silent killer, right? And, and, and one must, even the sun overexposure to heat can cause headaches, right? Um, uh, some migraines are more deeply neurological, but um, the discernment will lead to maybe a, a disappointment in knowing what it is, but discovery as well that reveals unto you now what can be as we move forward addressed or treated properly, all right? But with these challenges, again, the hope is that we would not just simply set it aside. Challenges that some communities are still facing with even um, um, uh, expressing or communicating uh, or sharing the gospel message in this deeply virtual age has caused some to say, forget about it. Listen, I'm from the rural parts of Virginia. I love home. I'm a product of a home through and through but I also challenge some of my sisters and brothers as well. Um, but I've seen it in the urban context as well that I'm talking about early on in this uh, pandemic uh, because of uh, discovering this present age in which we choose to use the virtual gifts that God has given us as the medium of transmitting the gospel. We, uh, some folks said that it's not me and I'm letting it go and therefore come to church anyhow. Oh, they have a love for and a deep concern for the health and the well-being of their members. But we're saying take on, try, challenge, show the problem or the challenge that Christ is in you. For greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. Tackle it. Take it on. Yes, it's going to require strategy. It's going to require uh, strategic leadership. It's going to require visioning. It's going to require full partnering with um, uh, other bodies and constituents within your community or your church to make sure that the work is done, such as uh, investing even in um, more stable Wi-Fi, <laughs> investing in a laptop, investing in someone young or old, listen, y'all, who may not have been attending church up to this point on a regular basis, but guess what? You need them in the church more than you need that lead singer that you used to need whether it's soprano or alto or tenor. Uh, we, we need that person working that camera, working that sound room. Uh, whoever son, daughter, grandson, or granddaughter is that only showed up for Easter and Mother's Day and felt that he or she had no place in the church or no opportunity to express their gift, but they are geniuses. And that of social media and, 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 and again, technology. So 
tackling, taking on the challenge, and welcoming the full team. You know, one body, many parts. And then guess what? At the end of the day, it will be affirmed. We will receive and even extend such validation uh, that uh, the, the task at hand was intended and meant for us to grow, um, to demonstrate again, oftentimes that God still uses the foolish things to confound the wise and the weak to confound the mighty. And guess what happens after that, as you see before you? We cannot become content, well, I should say complacent, we cannot pitch our tent after making our way through one valley of over one mountain, right? And therefore being totally caught off guard, not being in a state of perpetual uh, 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 paranoia, but just knowing that challenges do come as this living body of Christ continues to move forward uh, throughout this century and, 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 and being made to take on again um, different um, experiences and challenges that uh, could very well compromise our health. But is ever evolving and moving, but toward, um, uh, at the end of the day, resolve and, and fulfillment. We learn from these experiences. We grow in, uh, from these experiences. We are able to store up knowledge that's useful not only in this moment, but of course later on and that experience and that knowledge has birthed a wisdom that we can also share and dispense unto others who might very well find themselves um, uh, potentially threatened by a similar vice or challenge or struggle. I'll conclude with this um, and then that, um, that um, you know, some of the challenges that we uh, find ourselves facing uh, in, in the body of Christ, again, um, in this present age might have a certain face that's unfamiliar, but a challenge or restriction is that which it is. Nothing new under the sun from that perspective. Because we also have, I've discovered that, uh, that which we are trying to be, for instance, as fiscally responsible, right? Faithful stewards, while still carrying out the work and ensuring that the work is being done. Not in my present context, but in a previous context, I, I, I find myself still having to weigh and decide, okay, um, that which we associate with the corporate world and we don't like, but that is also what affects the church. And that is sometimes fiscal or financial cuts, you know, and being made mindful of what's of the most significance. And we're talking about the ministries of of, of, of liturgy and, 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 and create space for cornonia still and, 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 and serving and the didactic and the didactic. But there's some things that we find ourselves facing and, and it may very well impact the life and the well-being of a beloved sister or brother who labors alongside of you as we've been challenged. Um, but in the same manner, um, such fiscal restrictions now uh, that a lot of churches face uh, due to um, COVID and uh, not having live or active or face-to-face -face attendance, we're seeing um, uh, a growing need to re recalibrate break budgets. Take on and tackle that challenge. Don't deny it, don't run from it. Um, and, um, and, and whatever strategy is used to bring about balance and greater health uh, which might very well demand of us, right? To look into other streams of income for the body of Christ. Might demand of us to establish an LLC. It might require of us to take, listen, that hospitality and helping hands ministry that is only used to stuff our bellies at funerals and ho annual homecoming and annual anniversary services. But we know that those sisters and brothers that work in that ministry do a marvelous job. It might very well mean we have to take that ministry on the road in the form of a food truck or open it up in the spirit of a cafe that's still serving and feeding and creating, creating moments of koinonia or fellowship, but also, as we see many churches, being able to gain um, some additional resources, right? Um, and um, I, I share with you right now you know, we're in the process of establishing a car wash. That's my aim. That's my hope. Um, the first stage is not going to be what the hope is, and that is to have 
uh, a facility in which we can hire ex-offenders, at least for a short period of time, give them some opportunities to establish um, a, a resume, right? Um, but, all, but, but for now, taking advantage of our teens over this summer and, and doing it by way of a mobile unit, whether, whether it leads to resources coming directly to the church or not, doesn't matter. As long as our kids as well are benefiting from it, that's, that's still creating other streams of opportunity to do ministry and, and uh, income, as long as shared space and renting out of facilities. Take on these challenges, and, um, and then after you do it, share how you made it through and buckle yourself down to see whatever uh, wind shall blow next. I'm done, doctors.